Hello and welcome back to Bear Ski Method. This is a channel about the natural order. If you haven't been here before, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll miss the you know upcoming videos and whatnot. And we have tons of new topics coming up. Aside from the piranhas, which you often see me feeding and working on the tanks, and also building this giant tank back there, the holdup was the, the ceiling and the glass and everything else, the decisions were endless. Um, as far as the structural integrity, it's sound. Now I just need to seal it off and move on with the project. Reason being is I have some uh, rescues right here, 17 individuals that need a new home, thinking about rehoming or moving these uh, pack of adults in there as well, kind of intermingling uh, the two packs and maybe even species. Uh, I also have Kariba, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, and they may or may not <laughs> conjoin or become a one super pack in this monster 1200 gallon approximately tank. Um, in addition, uh, we talk about the raw feeding and you see my you know, companions running around here, cats and dogs, and the reason behind it, and I gotta tell you, there's really no uh, need to argue anything here. Uh, we've all discovered that nature knows best and it's best to just sort of duplicate or mimic the design, but obviously using our knowledge, technology, and everything else to improve if you can do that, or at least to get as close as possible as what nature would have done herself. So, uh, on that notion, I uh, just wanted to kind of imply that there will be new topics and uh, new um, you know, things to talk about that you guys bring up, and I kind of draw my you know, <laughs> inspirations from now. I do what I do here and you guys uh, always, you know, are welcome to see. Uh, I have a whole playlist for Red Rooster, which is a Red Oscar, toughest Oscar known to Piranha. And I'm going to do a little upgrade for him. Maybe scaping and so forth and so on. It's been so long and I feel bad that he's alone. However, he's one of those guys that doesn't tolerate um, tank mates. So, <clears throat> Let's move on to the next topic. All right, my friends. So we talk about the piranhas, the uh, rescues, you know, and all of it, including the Kariba, which uh, the tank needs maintenance. <laughs> There's always something going on. Uh, the lifestyle, you really do have, you know, some ways of changing us. Uh, nature itself or animals will not only require your attention and you know you become your responsibility but it will also leave this resounding feel of you know belonging and uh, I suppose love just unconditional love and who doesn't want to you know feel loved or feel important and the need for it being needed is certainly a real thing and some of us uh, that have difficulties you know let's just say socializing or it's just in these times well, we're living in sort of tough times where socializing is forbidden. Uh, <clears throat> you can find refuge and comfort in your pets and your companions, which oftentimes are, you know, kind of like neglected, left behind to their own demise, just so we can keep up with our daily responsibilities and so forth, and not realizing they become a huge part of our life, a positive aspect in our life that actually centers us, balances us with everything else that we do every day, so to speak. So, yeah, the reevaluating of one's, uh, I suppose, busy life or whatever that you find value of value, uh, may be something completely different and you never thought about it. Being receptive is just that. You have to be receptive. Whether it's open-minded or your body, physical, uh, you know, meat vehicle is ready for some sort of uh, workload. I'm gonna keep it in very simple terms so we don't start using some kind of exercise jargon or whatever fitness stuff or get too biological too because that turns a lot of people off that simply want to just start something and they don't need a lecture. The point is, you know, always bite as much as you can chew. So if you're not fitness oriented or uh, comfortable with your fitness just yet, start off with simply learning to be consistent and uh, developing the discipline of getting back into this routine which 
shortly, after just 20 some days, three weeks or so, will become a routine for you and you're gonna miss it. You, it sort of becomes you know, part of you. It really is, it's a psychological uh, effect that routines do take on us. <laughs> so it goes in reverse too, just to you know, get rid of certain, let's just say habits or routines, it takes just about three weeks, including smoking. Um, I used to smoke. I, I didn't. I didn't smoke until I was 25. Then I met somebody and I guess peer pressure. <laughs> I started smoking and I smoked a lot and then I developed my own routine of hopping in the car and doing my business and then lighting up a cigarette each time. <clears throat> Ended up being like a pack a day endeavor. Awful. Until, hmm, I don't know, I've done it for about six or seven years, maybe more. <clears throat> and then I had my daughter, just by what she turned two or three, she really was very outspoken. She told me that I should quit smoking because I may die from cancer. And let's just say, cold turkey was the word. <laughs> I dropped it right there and there and never picked it up since, not even once. So I gotta tell you, it's all in your, in your you know, mind and your ability to sort of conquer those uh, habits that we've had. Eliminating certain habits now will be even more important than trying to pile on more great, you know, uh, positive or attributing, contributing things, which they will be, and they sure will be, but you have to make room for them first. You can't pile up more people into a room unless you let some out. You know how this works. You know, it's logic. So, my friends, um, let's dive in a little bit more into the lifestyle and why you have to balance things before you start just cramming them. <laughs> See these two behind me? Uh, they're sleeping on top of each other like uh, Spoonie almost. <laughs> Zulu and Czar. 120 pound um, Rottweiler, German Rottweiler. And we believe Czar is a closer to a American Pitbull Terrier than he is of a bully, American bully, but he may be a mix of something like that. We had no certification, he was a rescue. And uh, well, they are getting along. Usually the cat joins them too. It's hilarious. Anyway, what I was saying is uh, oftentimes you'll find yourself in these new untreaded waters, sort of uncomfortable, out of your element. And that's exactly what uh, you need to become receptive. And once you become placid and comfortable, you really don't care. You're not challenged. And what happens? You get, you know, overweight. Your body just adapts to the situation. So you have to take yourself out of this, you know, comfortable element and uh, put yourself in a more stressful but controlled environment where you can demand from the body to sort of be receptive and react. The idea behind changing your diet is often misconstrued or confused by calorie intake and outtake and everything else where you really have to simply concern yourself with your macros, number one, which if you don't know what macros are, it's you know, carbs and protein and fats versus how many calories you have to count and so forth. Calories, basically cardio burn, burns off your calories and that has very little to do with counting them. Uh, as far as macros and understanding what you're eating, uh, it's way more important and it goes along hand in hand with fasting. Um, I gotta tell you that I have been on multitude of uh, array of different, you know, uh, experimental diet or whatever dieting while I was, you know, training or whatever, you know, just to see how it would work. And I did it by myself, on myself, before I spoke out about its effectiveness. And I gotta say, you know, as far as the low carb Atkin diets back in the day, they definitely work. They have an effect on, you know, you drop in fat, but it's not a very balanced diet, you know, you lacking other things and then shortly after there have been some findings that it's not even good for your mind you know as far as your well-being <clears throat> psychological well-being is to deprive yourself so much of carbs so again it's all about balancing currently i'm on the carnivore diet and i gotta tell you it is predominantly meat-based diet that's all there is i modified it again to my you know likings and to my lifestyle and that's what you have to do there's no stone written recipe for everyone to be what they want to be you live your life just the way you want to according to you and you only know what is effective or not you know you sometimes have to like i said take yourself out of the 
comfort zone and such and such and wander into the unknown and somebody's, you know, let's just say experience or their mistakes could be your guide. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm sort of trying things out and this work that didn't, not for long, but I saw a fact. So when I started sort of blending and mixing, you know, a lot of the techniques or whatever, the information that I've derived, gathered, and then combined, sort of concocting a recipe of my own, how to find the fitness for me without spending all days in the gym, all hours and all that. I, I, not for me, trust me. I have so many things that I have to do every day that I like to prefer doing than sweating and beating myself up for 40 some minutes in the gym. Because truly, that's all it takes. About 40 minutes, you should be wrapping it up. If you're not, that means you're, you know, you haven't found your recipe yet. <laughs> the idea is again to sort of learn and adapt and you know and and evolve. And if you're not, you gotta change something. You cannot keep doing the same thing and expect new results. That is pure insanity. We all know that. The definition of it, as a matter of fact. So. Don't get hung up on the fact that you're putting in the effort and then you get disappointed when you don't see the results. And that's oftentimes what people do. They put in the effort, they think they're really doing more than the guy who's doing nothing, sitting on the couch or whatever, and they expect so much more but it's not coming. And why is it? Yet you're kind of so, let's just say, down into your ways that you're, you just refuse to accept anything new. And worse yet, get out of your comfort zone and try it. <laughs> try it for at least 20 some days. You know, the magic uh, three week period. All right, my friends. Well, I'm really not sure if you're enjoying these vlogging sessions. Some of you do, and I think they're kind of fun too because it's a clear way of communicating what's on my mind and not necessarily trying to change yours. <laughs> the point is, uh, I really, Appreciate your, you know, attending and paying attention and listening and everything else as I sort of mumble and, well, let's just say share what's, what and how, because, you know, one thing is showing it, but another thing is kind of breaking it down for everyone to understand that it doesn't just happen overnight. That it does, does take some planning and effort and maybe a sprinkle of luck. So as far as uh, what we talked about, if you are interested in hearing more about it. Drop me some comments, let me know, hey, should we move this to a different channel? I don't really know how YouTube works anymore, to be honest. The algorithm is just not my, uh, not my cup of tea, not something I can change or affect, and otherwise, I'm not going to break my uh, mind over it. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is, if you are interested in hearing more about it, let me know. We're gonna you know, kind of accentuate, make another playlist and whatnot. And what we're gonna talk about is just simply the Bearsky Method lifestyle. I guess I suppose it's nothing more than applying the natural order of, you know, things in, in order to achieve what we would consider a symbiotic or, or some sort of, you know, positive relationship between us and nature and everything else around, even in these very much uh, changing, quickly changing times. I'll see you on the next one, my friends.